Well, hi everyone, this is Don Smith and I'd like to welcome you to the October tip of the month. I hope you're all out capturing fall color right now. I know I'm going to be leaving on a trip very shortly and wanted to make sure I got this video out to you before I departed to do my fall color shooting. I actually have already done some fall color shooting back in September uh, at my annual Grand Teton uh, fall workshop that I completed with this year with Ron Madra. We're going to be doing it this upcoming 2025 in September. All the dates are on my website. It's in late September and this year uh, in 2025 Gary Hart will be joining me. So we hope that uh, we get you all signed up. It's just opened up. We only have 10 positions. That's all the park will allow us to do. So it's first come first serve and uh, I'll leave the link here and in the notes so you can go find it. Well, October is the month that Adobe typically gives us the big updates in Lightroom and Photoshop. And there's a lot of videos online. This isn't going to be a video about all of the updates, but this is a video about one that I'm really genuinely excited about, and it's a profile. And so I want to dive right in. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying this profile is in beta format, but I want to get you your appetite whetted as to what it can do. So if you come up to here by default, um, I'm in Adobe Camera Raw and this is inside of Photoshop and I have to preface that also. If you're in Lightroom, you're not going to find this profile that I'm going to show you. So you have to be inside of Adobe Camera Raw Photoshop version. And if you click on those four squares and come up here to favorites in the top left, if I click on it, you're going to see it opens up as Adobe Adaptive Beta uh, dash Adaptive. So uh, I'm just calling it Adobe, Adobe Adaptive, excuse me. And what it is, this is strictly a obviously a profile that's built on AI, and I'm wondering if it's kind of similar to what we're seeing in the Enhanced slider in Luminar Neo. So once I've selected that profile, I'm going to hit the back button, and now you can see it's, it's locked in there. Underneath, it has a slider, and I can pull it up or pull it down. And uh, I'm not really sure if I like doing that or just, you know, coming into my... Um, next module, which is all my lights, which is basically my develop module in Lightroom, right? So I'm, I'm kind of just figuring, just having played with it a little bit, to come over and not try to blow those highlights, but to open up the shadows as much as I can. And so you can see in this image, it's 131. But watch this when I go down into those shadows and I open that up. Look at how much room it has down in those shadows for an excellent starting point, in my opinion. And I haven't even maxed that out. That's plus 27. And the highlights in the sky, I could tune down a little and just balance this kind of back and forth. I would probably want to add a little contrast in there now. And once again, open that up. All I'm looking for is a fantastic starting point. Let me hold the Alt or Option key here and set my blacks. Um, I think they're fine as there. We want a little blacks for DMAX and printing. Uh, and again, this is just a starting point, but look at how much room you're giving. And it's not giving you an HDR effect, is it? So let's move along. I've got five frames here. This is another sunrise shoot captured at Jenny Lake. And I want to uh, preface this by saying I've been shooting all these images on my Sony a7R5, which I happen to think is a fantastic um, uh, sensor. And here we go. It resets itself at Adobe Color. I'm going to do the drop down to now because I have that in there. And you can see one click and look at what it's done. And now I could go back maybe here and recapture some of those highlights. Uh, I could go in and play with the color if I wanted to. I could go into masking. Just look at that in one click, what it has done 
in one click. It's amazing, amazing. Again, we're thinking starting point. Here's another one we captured. Now this one might be really tricky. So let's see. Let's go to Adobe Adaptive and look at how it just opened up this whole barn area down there. Yeah, of course there's noise in there. I can take that out with either the, the new denoise module in here or, uh, or more preferably what I like to do is go to Topaz Photo AI and use their uh, denoise module. I think it's just incredible. But watch this in the shadows here on that barn. Look at that. That's, I mean, you would, there was no way I'd want to open that up. That would make that look daylight. Um, you know, you would just kind of figure where you want it. And uh, you could play around with the amount up in here. I don't think on this particular image I would need to. I would leave it at 100%. So it's, you know, you could all immediately start playing around with this with, um, your night photography. I haven't, I've, I've done one frame really with night photography. It was pretty, pretty phenomenal. Let's click on another one. The first hint of sunrise coming at Oxbow Bend here. Um, again, we will click here, go to adaptive and look at how much more in balance that is. And I haven't even messed with anything over here. I would probably want to take my highlights down a little, right? I don't think I need to do much in the shadows, maybe a little just to lift the shadows a hair. See if I can find my white point here, which is way up in the sky, obviously, and my black point. And maybe just pop in, and I'm just doing this really quickly, a little bit of, I don't really want to do too much in the realm of contrast on that. That's a soft shot and I'm going to leave it as a soft shot. But I had mentioned you could come in and change your color. I could warm that up just a hair uh, or better yet come down here into the color mixer and let's say for example I wanted to warm up these aspens on the back side of the lake. You know I could come in there even these green trees that haven't turned yet. I can move that a little more towards yellow. I could come up in here and add a little color up there. Um, so really kind of cool. Now this is one of my friend Ron and his daughter Kelly. Uh, I just threw this in. This is going to be a first for me too. I'm going to give it a try. Let's go to adaptive. And did that take... Um, I don't know if that one took. Let's no. Okay, I have to come back up here in the favorites. And it was probably retained it because I was doing that before. Okay, so um, what I mean by doing it before, those first four I was rehearsing with. And then I spotted this one and I moved that in. So I'm going to do the amount. We're going to come down to light. And watch if I was to hit auto, which I do when I'm using my nonlinear previews. You're going to get this message coming up that says, for best re results, avoid using auto and Adobe Adaptive Profile together. So um, um, I am going to click out a don't apply. And now we're going to come over here and let's open up those shadows. Isn't that incredible? Let's take down the highlights. Look at that. I'm bringing, I'm bringing the sunset. The sun had gone down behind Mount Moran here already. Let's do a before and after on that. That is just, now that's a first for me. I hadn't even tested this file, you guys. So I'm seeing this right along with you guys for the first time. And then again, I could come in here if I want to warm things up a little bit. Um, so I was very excited out of everything that was added to Lightroom and Photoshop. This one just caught my attention and blew me away. And the cool thing, this is working on a raw level, so it's non-destructive. So that's a look at Adobe Adaptive. This is going to be found in Photoshop 2025 only. Don't go into your Lightroom and start looking around for this. You're not going to find it. I am, uh, when Adobe puts something out as beta, what they're basically telling us is, hey, this is a work in process of progress. So if it doesn't work all the time, you know, don't contact us. We're still working on it. 
I think this is going to be phenomenal. I want to see what they come up with the finished version. And I'm sure when they have it finished, you will start seeing it appear in your Lightroom panels also. So this may change my mind about working with uh, linear profiles, or um, which I still do. And I would like to do some more testing between these. Um, and see what I'm liking, but uh, I can already tell you I'm kind of hooked on this. I just wish it was showing up in beta format in Lightroom. So Adobe, if you're listening, please get it in there on the next update ASAP. And uh, I would love to continue on with this. So hey, uh, I hope this little tip has helped you guys. I hope you're again out photographing your fall color. This is the time of year to do it. I'm going to be leaving in a few days to go do mine. And um, I also want to mention I've been working hard on the new processing video that's going to come out. We're going to have a video on this to show it, but I wanted to give you guys a heads up start on this. Um, I will be getting more information out to you both here on the monthly newsletter and social media channels and what have you. We're targeting just about the week of Thanksgiving to release that whole video series. So until then... And until next month, you guys take care.